This is the new Sony 16 to 35 f4 G lens power zoom. It's awesome. I've tested it against the previous version, a Zeiss 16 to 35 f4 lens, and also briefly to a G Master version. And here are my thoughts. Hello everyone, my name is Magic. I'm a wedding photographer, Sony Europe ambassador, father of four children. Welcome to this YouTube channel, the channel where I mostly talk about wedding photography, gear, mainly Sony gear and software and stuff like that. Consider subscribing if you haven't already and follow my Instagram for more behind the scenes stuff and for cool images basically. So this new lens is actually the first announcement of 2022 and we can definitely see that it's following the path of the previous announcements. Um, so we do have a refreshed version of an existing lens, of a lens that was previously built with size. We've seen that with a 35G Master, which was a refreshed version of 35 Distagon size lens. And now we see it um, in this zoom lens. And by following the path of the previous announcements, I also mean that we have a smaller version of, of a lens. So this is a smaller to its previous version and, and better, faster, sharper. So starting with the design, this lens is actually tiny and it's super light. And by that, I mean that when you hold it in your hands, it actually feels really, really light, like, like a toy. And actually very, very, very light, lighter than all the lenses that I've owned. And we do have a familiar build to a G Master series lenses. So we have a triple, rings here. So the first ring is the aperture ring. So we gained the aperture ring that was not there in its size version. We do have a zoom ring and we do have a focusing ring. Additionally, we do have a declickable option for aperture. So it can go either smooth or, you know, clicky, depending if you want to do it for photos or videos. We have a custom button. We have AF to MF switch. And what's new, we have iris lock for this lens. So we do have option to lock this lens either on A, so automatic aperture that can be set from the camera, or um, you can have it moved uh, from 4 to 22. And then one more additional thing we have, we have a power zoom lever here on the left side of this lens. And as a prime lens shooter and a wedding photographer, I have not had experience with power zoom lenses before. So what is a power zoom? It's actually electronically, so digitally controlled zoom. So you can either control it from the zoom ring or you can control it on that zoom lever on the left or you can control it from a camera or a remote. So it's really convenient because uh, with Sony a 7 IV, for example, you can set a custom buttons to move the zoom around back and forth. And if you have FX3 camera or ZV-E10 camera, these cameras also have this lever next to the shutter uh, button. So you can zoom in and zoom out on the camera, which is also super convenient. But the power of power zoom, the power of power zoom, the power of power zoom is actually that you can set a speed of that zoom and it will allow you to have a really smooth operation. It can go really, really, really slow or it can go really fast. And that I think opens a lot of opportunities for a creative filmmaking. What's more, uh, for example, with the zoom ring, you can set it from the menu, um, the, the rotation direction. So you can decide whether you want to zoom in uh, by rotating the ring to the right, or you want to zoom in by rotating um, the ring to the left. So if you have a personal preference, you can set it from a menu. And also this lens, as all the recent upgraded lenses, um, is equipped with linear motors. It has four exit linear motors that allow you for really fast and quick out of focus, but also for the first time ever, this, this linear motors control the power zoom, uh, which makes it really responsive and really quick and smooth and feel like normal mechanical, you know, zoom ring. So that is very convenient. And I have to say, it feels really great to use both 
zoom ring or zoom lever or zoom buttons. I had so much fun with it. So this lens having the power zoom being really small and compact, it's clear to me that it is meant for vlogging. This is, I think, the first purpose that Sony had for this lens, you know, video and, and especially vlogging. And I've tried vlogging. I'm not a vlogger. I'm a wedding photographer, but I did a fair amount of vlogging in the last few years. And, and then I tried vlogging with this lens on my Sony a7 IV. And I have to say it was real nice. It was a really nice experience. So this lens on Sony a7 IV is actually really a light. So what I, so this is how it looks on Sony a7 IV. So it was really convenient, even holding it in your hand, I used this um, Sony wireless mic. So it had, you know, the top transmitter and a receiver here with a mic. So, it, so this is the test. 16 millimeters vlogging capability. So I'm recording this on a7 IV. I do have this wireless uh, microphone on my camera. I'm doing this against the light just for fun. Simba. So definitely a great lens for video and for vlogging, but also amazing lens for photography. And, and then seeing what Sony recently did with all the updates, having the lenses super sharp, I'm here coming with news that this lens is extremely sharp from corner to corner at 16 millimeters and at 35 millimeters, it's that sharp everywhere in the frame. It's crazy. So comparing sample photos shot on A7R3 to a size version of this lens at 16 millimeters, you see that in the middle of frame, both of these lenses are actually really sharp. There's not much of a difference here, but then going to the corner shows how good the new version actually is. And then zooming in to 35 millimeters, uh, you can see that size lost its sharpness, while the new G lens is extremely sharp, both in the middle or in the corners of the frame. What is what, what actually surprised me, I wasn't able to turn off the lens compensation for this lens. Um, so going to the menu of my Sony a7R3 or a7 IV, the lens compensation was, was grayed out, so I couldn't access it, meaning the compensation was already applied to the image, both in video and in photo. So what, what we see here um, on the screen of this lens, for example, at 16 millimeters, shows already corrected image. Going to the Lightroom and loading the RAW file um, with lens correction off, that was the first time I could actually see how distorted is the image. And at 16 millimeters, it comes with a really heavy barrel distortion compared to Zeiss um, version at 16 millimeters was more straight. But then with applied corrections, corners are still so sharp that I started to thinking, is there a reason not to correct lens in post? Is there any downsides of this correction since we have this amazing sharpness from corner to corner? So even the corrected image, let's say in post or digitally corrected image is way better than uncorrected image of size lens that they didn't have that barrel distortion. Having it turned to on is definitely a way to go with this lens. Let me know down in the comments, what do you guys think about this, about correcting images in post? Also that new G lens can focus closer on its tally end. So we have a minimal focus distance of 0.24 uh, meters at 35 millimeters compared to 0.28 on older size lens. Um, and have very minimal focus breathing actually. So look at these samples. Uh, here I'm focusing back and forth at 16 millimeters and then at 35 millimeters. And you can definitely see that the focus breathing is minimal already. And then in Sony a7 IV and 
FX6. That's the only two cameras so far that can also apply additional focus breathing compensation, which basically minimize that that breathing to zero. But even without this compensation, the breathing is minimal. All of this makes this lens really great choice as an ultra wide angle zoom lens. It's definitely a successor to a great lens, way smaller with internal zooming. So it doesn't extend when you zoom in and zoom out, giving you opportunity to have it on gimbal all the time. Power zoom, extreme sharpness, extreme fast out of focus powered by the new Sony linear motors, super quiet operation, smooth operation of aperture ring. So that leaves us right now, I think with the choice of either getting this new F4G lens or getting a G Master, which would give you an F 2.8 aperture. So if you're after that one stop of light, meaning more blurred background, here you can see comparison images with F4 and F 2.8 G Master. You can see that at F 2.8, a bigger bokeh balls, more blurred background, still on the corner, the f4 new lens is sharper so if you don't necessarily need f2.8 i think this g lens is the way to go especially for those of you who are after content creation and that vlogging type of lens maybe to your a7c camera or a7 IV camera it's amazing and that's it from me now thanks so much for watching the content let me know down in the comments what do you think about this new 16 to 35 f4 g lens and see you in the next video